I live off of Father. And I was heavily under the influence of Father as a child. Now, I was a believer, but I wouldn't, I, I, you know, but I wasn't a follower, but I was a believer. See, uh, that's how the, the story for a lot of us. We believe, but we don't follow. And somebody may say, well, sister girl, what do you mean by follow? Meaning you, you, you believe in Jesus, you have a respect for him, but you're not, you haven't repented. So that means you're living your life the way that you want to. And then the day comes when um, Jesus knocks on the door of your heart. And he says in so many words, follow me. And you do. And that's all it is. See, people try to make it be such a big, major event. And it is as it pertains to um, there's a celebration among the angels, even over one person that repents, over one sinner that repents. But salvation is easy. It's the walk of faith that's difficult. Oh, my God. Can I talk this thing out? But coming from a, I want to say a religious background, and I definitely am not religious and I'm not into religion. But I say a religious background because I, as many of you, were brought up in the church, you know, and not only that, brought up reading the Holy Scriptures and, you know, you had to say your prayers at night. You had to say your blessing to Father over your food. And, you know, I, I was brought up traditionally, just like many of you. Definitely, very traditional, in a traditional manner I was brought up. But um, at the same time, you know, it's a tradition is not going to get you into the kingdom of God. Religion is definitely not going to get you into the kingdom of God. The scribes and the Pharisees were religious. The only thing that's going to get you into the kingdom of God is a mouth confession, repenting, turning from your sins, and following Jesus Christ until you breathe your last breath. That's what's going to get you into the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean you won't fall. It just means when you fall, get up. It doesn't mean you won't go back to doing things that you used to do. It means when you go back, come back to God. That he always leaves the door open. You must understand out there that the door is never locked and sealed until you breathe your last breath. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you've gone in your life. No matter what depth, no matter what valley, whatever. The door of opportunity is always open with Father until you breathe your last breath. After you breathe your last breath, it's over for you. After I breathe my last breath, it's over for me. Anything that you and I have not gotten right and corrected on this side of glory. And I say this side of glory because anywhere that God's presence is, there's a glory. On this side of existence, it's going to be too late. Don't let it be said too late. And especially for those of you that have God's favor. Because if you have God's favor and you leave this world um, in a bad way, whew, you might stand under harsher judgment than somebody that didn't have God's favor. Because there are different levels to hell. And there's a stronger um, judgment to people also that teach. And they deliberately teach in error. So, you know, a teacher has a heavier responsibility than somebody that's just a part of the, I think they call it the laity. Okay? So you have a, huge, more, a larger responsibility. And, you know, I, I just um, basically, I just share what I know. I share what I know and I don't try to force anything on anybody. Uh, people can believe whatever they want to believe. I believe there's somebody out there under the sound of my voice that I'm helping and that I'm assisting, even if it's just one person, then, hey, I've done my job. That was the person that was assigned to me, evidently, or I was, uh, uh, I was assigned to them or whatever. But I believe everybody has somebody to show them the way. It's just up to them to see and hear. And like I said, Father has his people down here. I know there are many of you out there, you may not believe it, and you might not want to receive it, but Father has his people down here. And uh, we're out here, and uh, a lot of us are just living normal lives. You know, we don't have glamour and glitz and all of that. And even if we do, you know, um, we still, many of us should know that um, the work for Father comes first. And that no matter what you obtain in this world, heaven and earth are going to pass away. But Father said, my word shall never pass away. So meaning God saying, whatever I say, it is what it is, you know. And I'm saying it is straight like that. That's, that is your seal of, that's your guarantee. I was going to say seal of approval, but that's your guarantee right there. That if God said it, it is so, put a period at the end of the sentence. He's already said, heaven and earth are going to pass away. But my word, that means that God's word will stand through the test of time. It will stand through centuries, years, days, hours, and seconds. And I'm telling you, when Father said, fret not thyself because of evildoers, 
That's not going to pass away. Oh, my God. Am I talking out here to somebody? He said, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Those words are not going to pass away. God's got something for the evildoers. I know they don't believe it right now. They don't receive it right now. But they must be receptive one day because they're going to be living in it. They're going to be eternally dying in it if they don't repent. They're going to be burning in it. Singed in it. Crispy, if you want. Uh, hey, it is what it is, and it's straight like that. Because, because why? Father's words are not going to pass away. Only heaven and earth. Only heaven and this earth. Heaven, the heaven, that's the sun, y'all. And, uh, well, obviously, but that little black dot. And, uh, well, it looks like a black dot on my camera. And the earth. All of it is going to pass away. If Father God said it's going to pass away, it's going to pass away. That means it's not going to be here forever. But let me tell you something that will be here forever. You and I. And your enemies will exist forever too. And if you could see what their fate was. Mm -mm -mm -mm. For, all of, for those of you out there, if you do hate your enemies, if you could really see what they were facing, you probably wouldn't hate them. It, your hate would turn into a pity. Mm -hmm. And you may say, oh, well, no, this person did this and that person did No, 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 no. If you could really see what hell looks like, oh, my God. I don't want to know what Father knows as in its entirety. A lot of people may be like, a lot of people out there, you may want to know everything Father knows. I don't want to know everything Father knows because I couldn't bear the intensity of seeing who or what is in hell. Because I'm sure for a lot of us, it would probably be some familiar faces down there. And it would be people that you knew back on earth. If you didn't know them, you may have seen them on television. Or for a lot of them, you may have gone to their concerts. I, I'm just talking what's real. You may have seen them acting on television. You may have seen them get awards. You may have seen them sing, dance, act. You may have uh, seen them in your workplaces. You may have seen them um, in your high schools, your elementary schools, out in society, strangers. You, if you could really know and see who was in hell... It would break your heart. You'd be like, oh my God, I know that ain't such a sick. And if they can see you, they'd be crying out to you. Help me, please help me, you know. It's just nothing you can do. So no, I don't want to know everything Father knows. You take your worst enemy, and I'm talking about somebody you really can't stand. I mean, I'm talking about you, can't, you don't care if this person dropped dead right now. But if you saw them in hell... I don't care how much hate and animosity you have towards them. It would, I believe, I believe, you would have to be a heartless person, I think, for it not to leave. I mean, at least you would be like, well, I'm going to pull you out of hell, but I still don't like you. But, you know, I'm just saying, I, I, hey, I'm not trying to be funny, y'all, but I'm, I'm just saying. Those people are desperate that are down there. Jesus came so that you don't have to go there. And he has his people out here that um we have his favor and we're just spreading a message we're not trying to well some of us might be stepping over our boundaries but my note for me personally i don't try to tell nobody what to do the only thing i try to do is um i basically just take satan's weapons and with the power of god use them on himself make him use them on himself so whatever he throws at me i throw it back by the power of god I don't take him on by myself. No, Father's always with me. We are never separated. But we take what Satan throws and we throw it back at him. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't sit there and let the devil disrespect you, your life, your name, your reputation, and all of that. No. And I know that those of you on social media, uh, or you're familiar with social media, uh, I personally, <laughs> for anybody that want to send me a message through social media, um, oh, I don't get it. <laughs> No, I don't deal with social media at all. I'm not interested. I'm old school. If I got something to, t to, uh, excuse me, to tell you, I will tell you to your face. And um, I'm sorry, y'all. I saw the stuttering. I got to share this with y'all. Anytime, you know, uh, Moses had a speech impediment, right? It just seems like anytime I get to, I've uh, went there as far as like talking, not necessarily talking about Moses, but I don't know if that's a spirit or what. But um, I. And then I'm going to get back to the social media thing. But I tell you what, I'll share this with you guys.